there. Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we work really hard to bring practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about you. So welcome to church. Sabbath church. Sabbath. Uh, God has been good to us, and we are here 
another Sabbath day. Can I get some juice on the mic, please? We are here another Sabbath day to give him thanks and praise for what he has done for us through the week. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. So before we begin our song service, let us stand for prayer. Let me pray. Loving Lord, we come once more in your presence to give you thanks and praise for your love and your mercy towards us. We invite your presence in our midst as we go through our Sabbath worship. And we ask now, Lord, that as we're about to do our song service and the Sabbath school, that you will tune our voices as we sing songs of praise to you. This supper in Jesus' name. Amen. We have heard a joyful song. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Number 340. Please take out your hymnals or your phones or your tablets and let us sing. Number three. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the gladness all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Glad the seeds and cross the way. Onward, tis our Lord's command. Wafted on the rolling tide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing it. The of the sea, echo back, the ocean gate, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing his soul through the gloom. When the heart for mercy craves. Sing in triumph for the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the wind the mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nation now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest camp. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Number 27, rejoice, see pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing. Rejoice, see pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and sing Your festal banner wave on high The cross of Christ your King Rejoice, rejoice Rejoice, give thanks and sing With voices full and strong as ocean surging praise, send forth the sturdy hymns of food, the sounds of ancient days. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. We hail the angels' choir. With all the saints on earth, for all the strains of joy and bliss, to rapture no bless man. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. 
rejoice, give thanks and sing. Yes, on through life's long path, still chanting as he go. From youth to age by night and day, in gladness and in war. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Praise Him who reigns on high, the Lord whom we adore, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Rejoice. Amen. Number 205. The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. The golden morning is fast approaching, Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. The gospel someone will soon be carried to the nation's round. The bridegroom then will cease to tarry and the trumpet sounds. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. Attended by all the shining angels down the flaming sky. The judge will come and will take his people where they will not die. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning pacing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. Then those loved ones who have long been parted will all meet that day. The tears of those who are broken hearted will be wiped away. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. All right, I need a favorite from this side. 532, number 532. I was right there, Sister Ro. Day by day and with each passing moment, Strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in my father's wise bestowment. I have no cause for worry or for fear. Day by day, and we each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in. My father's wise bestowment I have no cause for worry or for fear He whose heart is kind beyond our measure Gives them to each day what he deems blessed Lovingly, it's part of 
pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me, with a special mercy for each all. All my cares we fain would bear and share me, he whose name is Counselor and Paul. The protection of his child and treasure is the charge that on himself he laid. As your days, your strength shall be in measure, this the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not face with consolation. Offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, with joy and trouble needed, and to take us from the Father's hands. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. This side. Number 183, I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him, of him who first loved me for he left right words Blessed, but 
created and divine, set aside for holy time. Yes, the holy Sabbath rest by our God divinely blessed. He to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. Seek the pleasures of this earth with its folly, noise, and mirth. There are better things in store over on the other shore. Yes, the holy Sabbath rest by our God divinely blessed. He to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity as the Sabbath joy is on Friday in the set of sun priest and household that should meet sing and pray at Jesus' feet yes the holy Sabbath rest by our God divinely blessed, if to us the sign shall be throughout all eternity, asking Him for saving grace, also victory in the race, and to help us by His God to keep holy every heart. Yes, the holy Sabbath rest by our God divinely blessed. If to us the sign shall be throughout all eternity. Sabbath will not touch it, folks. You may be seated, please. You may be seated. Just share the wonderful, blessed um, week. Even though we have gone through a crucible in different form and stage and style. But through it all, God has been good to us. What do you say? And we not only say amen, but praise the Lord. God is good. Praise the Lord. Indeed. You see, when we have a chance to come and, say and give God thanks, you know, you must have told it back in us, Sister Will. No, you must have told it back. It might never, ever come again. So we need to praise the Lord when the Spirit says, Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. And not those prayers from our lips alone. For it's easy, very easy to say, Praise the Lord from our lips. But when it comes from the heart, the entire body benefited. And not only you benefit, but I'm benefit too. By praising the Lord. Um, who's, a, who's a steward? Who's a steward? And as long as we are saying Christ, we're a steward. In different fields, different areas. We have been going through this week um, revival series. And what a blessing it has been for the past three weeks. I have been blessed and I hope you too were, were blessed. By identifying yourself as a steward. As a steward in different fields. You don't have to look at me and say, listen, I want to a chance to do a you know, come up here and say morning and speak. I can't speak well. But nonetheless, I'm doing my part faithfully and willingly. That's how I do it. I don't, I don't try to compare and try to do what Sister Wilmette can do. I just give God thanks for what I can do. And if each one of us have that same principle, then for sure, we all can make a complete church. A complete church. Yes. So I must not do. Who is a faithful steward? Is one who utilizes his uh, own resources. So whatever your resources are. Utilize it well. Give God the glory. The praise and honor due to his name. He, he requires that of us. He is the creator of the entire universe. We must give, him, give God all the blessings due to his name. 
God created human to have dominion over all the earth. Not some of the earth, all the earth. And he promised that he will be with us even unto the end. This morning, some of us who won't be the usual one in terms of a message program, we'll be trying to reorganize our units as it were before the pandemic. And so we take time out to just ask you to stand, bow your head as we pray, and then we're going to invite our secretary to come and try to place us in different classes. And we're going to ask that you cooperate as best as possible. I know for some it's not easy to remove your usual location. Some people are so accustomed to their seating arrangement that it almost be a permanent state. And I understand, but we are hoping that you will cooperate this morning with us and do the best. So I invite you to stand, please, as we seek the Lord in prayer. And then we'll uh, go straight into the arranging of our different classes. Shall we bow our head, lift our thought, heaven's word, as we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your holy, righteous, loving name. Truly, God, we praise, we magnify, we lift your name up high for your goodness and your love that you have extended to us through the long week. You have kept us from all accidents and from danger, and you have given us in, keep us in our right mind so we can be here to glorify your name. Take full control of today's Sabbath day, Lord, we pray. May our thought, our intention, all our direction is being um, centered on you, who is the creator of our life. So, Lord, be our Sabbath school, we pray, God. As we go into a different arrangement, God, I pray your Holy Spirit, Lord, will come divinely near. And that, Lord, we will all cooperate, Lord, as best as possible, knowing, God, that you are here to bless and to do good. So take full control, we pray. Lead and direct and bless and sanctify, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And after we invite our secretary sister Sir to come forward, we'll have a comprehensive um, layout of our Sabbath school that will be done by our own pastor. So we're going to ask you please to move very orderly and very quietly as much as possible as we go into our lesson, as we go to our different classes. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay, so for this Sabbath, we'll be doing them in, what do you call them? Units. So class one, it will be class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, class six, class seven, class eight, class nine, class ten. So we'll just skip three benches, and then that's the next class. So this is class one. We'll start at the left here. And this is our new believers class and the regular visitors class. And the teacher for this class is Sister Daisy Williams. Okay. So Sister Daisy Williams for class one is the teacher and the assistant teacher is Sister Cynthia Dunstan. And the members are Latoya Watkins, Delroy Stewart, Gloria Easy, Nayo Camilla, Laura Kamika, Shante McLeod, Sonia Thompson, Alicia Ferron, Travis Morris, and you, Roy Daly. So that's a class one. Oh, can the teachers please say their positions and also the members? So as I said, it was Daisy Williams, Cynthia Dunstan, the teachers. Members are Latoya Watkins, Delroy Stewart, and that's class one here. Gloria Easy, Nayo Camilla, Laura Kamika, Shante McLeod, Sonia Thompson, Alicia Ferron, Travis Morris, and you, Roy Daly. Class two and two is to our right. And the teachers are Robert Barrett and Donald Law. Oh, don't see a teacher right now. Members, Sharon Barrett, Maxine Bramwell, Hubert Bramwell, O'Neill Swaby, Titus Leslie, Joel Bartley, Isilda Bartley, Jennifer Bruce, Janelle Johnson, Janet Law, Donna Elliott, Dana Duncan, Amoy White, 
Romaria Simmons, L. Trowers, and Dorothy Simmons. So that's class two to my right here. And the first three benches, please remember to occupy the first three benches. Yes, Sister Bruce? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you want me to remove your name from this big list? Okay. Class two, right here, first three benches. No, class three. And remember, class three is the next three benches after class one. And the teacher is Enrich Spence and Laurie Spence and Jim Chan. And then we have the members, Thelma Patterson, Hortense Houghton, Brenda Sr., Pearl Rowe, Beris Forbes, Jennifer Bramwell, Shanelia Bramwell, and Marie Forbes, Gerald Knight, Irene Ledford, Sharon Dawes, Sasha Gay Freta, Kenil Freta, Jane Gale, Charles Benbow, and Natalia Benbow. Class four, my right. Teacher, Zephaniah Mushet and Ephraim Price. Members, Sister Mushet, Tanisha Hines Price, Winsome Swaby, Anne Marie Fletcher, Sandra Lynn, Peter Lynn, Desmond Lamb, Xavier Crawford, Heather Mullins, Lisa Ferron, Yvonne Mitchell, Garfield Shuttlesworth, Suzette Bryant, Sel Selena Gordon, Carlinson Boswell, and Taisha Boswell. Class five, and that's over on the left. The teachers, Royan Barnaby and Gary Little. Faith Little members, Faith Little, George Jones, Harvalyn Barnes, Bernice Dixon, Rose Brown, O'Neill Johnson, Odette Blackwood, Lorraine Douglas, Wally Forbes, Pauline Reed, Etifel Reed, Shauna Bramwell, Roxanne Crawford Brown, Hugh Morgarden, Antoinette Campbell, Shantira Mitchell, Class six and class six is on your right. Luther Chantelope is the teacher, assistant teacher, Aston Powell. Members, Lorna Chantelope, Kevin Newell, Susanna Meikle Newell, Lisa Francis, Stacian Ellison, Delian Gray, Mark Powell, Timothy Elliott, Gifford Hanson, Diana Stewart, Kevin Foster, Kerryon Jacobs, Debbie Johnson, Javon Gordon, Victor Dixon, Alray Stewart, and Janice Stewart. Class seven to my left, teacher Lenny Hewitt, Marjorie Powell. Members, Carla Hewitt, Ivy Burke, Nikisha Surf, Oren Allen, Paula Allen, Stacey Ann Davy, Judith Dawes Turner, Philip Turner, Bridget Douglas, Janet Miller, Leonie Johnson, Julie Johnson, Simone Rowe, Ellsworth Dixon, Carla Dixon, and Dana Dixon. Class eight, to my right, Philip Williams is a teacher and Lily Pinnock. Members, Avoni Williams, Rose Bramwell, Robert Bramwell, Dora Brown, Colleen Dempster Griffiths, Richard Malcolm, Don Malcolm, Davangeline Malcolm, Denise Dawes, Carol Laird, Sandra Poiser, Boyd Fletcher, Sonia Fletcher, Dwight Dixon, Colleen Dixon, Colleen Dixon, and Marie Bicenti and Brother Bicenti. Class nine to my left, teacher Lincoln Peter and Luston Letts. Members Claudette Peter. Kenroy Crawford, Margaret Crawford, Earl Reed, Charmaine Ryan, Lurleen Morgan, Robin Morgan, Rafiq Hackshaw, Ansonette Stulls, Clifford Stevenson, Shirley Thompson, Halcyon Barrett, Barbara Saltu, Sharon Morris, Dahlia Lloyd, Shawi Wintgrant, and Troy Grant. And class 10, which is at the back to the right, and it's our youth class, 
The teacher is Ricardo Sampson and Audrey Chang. Members, Nicole Crawford, Gabriel Swaby, Philip Williams Jr., Jaden Forbes, Abigail Swaby, Abigail Fletcher, Shane Fletcher, Ajani Chantelope, Roshana Malcolm, Akelia Chang, Rihanna Robinson, Zonika Grant, Katrina Little, Kavion Foster, Raheem Spencer, Damar Williams, and Malik Fletcher. Anybody miss down where their classes? The lists are in the bags. There's a list in the bags provided. Pardon me? All right, let me just run through them one more time. All right, and please listen carefully. So class one, and I'm not gonna tell you where the classes are because I'm just running through them, all right? But ask the teachers to stand as we, as I call the name, and then you will know which class you belong to. Okay, so for class one, we have Daisy Williams and Cynthia Dunstan. The, the members are Latoya Watkins, Delroy Stewart, Gloria Easy, Nayoka Miller, Sha Laura Kamika, Shante McLeod, Sonia Thompson, Alicia Ferron, Travis Morris, and Uroy Daly. For class two, we have I had said that at the beginning. <laughs> so please, members, as you hear your name, please move to your respective class. Thank you. So class two, Robert Barrett, Daniel Law, and uh, Sharon Barrett. Maxine Bramwell, Hubert Bramwell, O'Neill Swaby, Titus Leslie, Joel Bartley, Isilda Bartley, Janelle Johnson, Janelle, Janet Law, Donna Elliott, Dana Duncan, Amoy White, Romario Smith, El Trowers, and Dorothy Smith. Class two, I think. Neither Brother Law nor Brother Bart is here, so, but this is it's the first class up on your right up here. Class three, Enric Spence and Laurie Spence and Jim Chan. Now we have Thelma Patherson, Hortense Houghton, Brenda Sr., Pearl Rowe, Beris Forbes, Jennifer Bramwell, Shanelia Bramwell, Anne Marie Forbes, Ger Gerald Knight, Irene Ledford, Sharon Dawes, Sasha Gay Freta, Keneal Freta, Jane Gale, Charles Benro Benbo, and Natalia Benbo. Class four, we have Zephaniah Mushet and Ephraim Price. And I don't see any of those persons, but it's class two right behind, cl class three, class four right behind class two on the right here. So that's Zephaniah Mushet, Ephraim Price, and then we have Sister Mushet, Tanisha Hines Price, Winsome Swaby, and Marie Fletcher, Sandra Lynn, Peter, Peter Lynn, Desmond Lamb, Xavier Crawford, Heather Mullins, Lisa Ferron, Yvonne Mitchell, Garfield Shettlesworth, Suzette Bryant, Selena Garden, Harlington Boswell, and Taisha Blythe Boswell. Class five. And that's Rohan Barnaby, teacher, and Gary Little, teacher. Members, Faith Little, George Jones, Haveline Barnes, Bernice Dixon, Rose Brown. So Sister Brown, you're over here. O'Neill Johnson, Odette Blackwood, Lorraine Douglas, Wally Forbes, Pauline Reed, Etifel Reed, Shauna Bramwell, Roxanne Crawford Brown, Hugh Mark Gordon, Antonette Campbell, Shantira Mitchell, and Amanda, but I'm not sure of Amanda's last name. Brian? Okay, so it's Amanda Brian. Class six, and that's Luther Chantelope and Aston Powell. 
and members, Lorna Chantelope, Kevin Newell, Susanna Meekle Newell, Lisa Francis, Stacey Ann Ellison, Delion Gray, Mark Powell, Smithy Elliott, Gifford Hansen, De Diana Stewart, Kevin Foster, Kevin Kerryon Jacobs, Debbie Johnson, Javon Gordon, Victor, Victor Dixon, Alray Stewart, and Janny Stewart. Class seven, and that's Lenny Hewitt, the teacher, and Marjorie Powell. We have Carla Hewitt, Alvy Burke, Nikisha Surf, Oren Allen, Paula Allen, Stacey Ann Davy, Judith Dawes Turner, Philip Turner, Bridget Douglas, Janet Miller, Leonie Johnson, Julie Johnson, Simone Rowe, Ellsworth Dixon, Carla Dixon, and Dana Dixon. Class eight, Philip Williams, a teacher, and Lily Pinnock. We have Avani Williams, Rose Bramwell, Robert Bramwell, Dora Brown, Brown, sorry, Pauline Dempster Griffiths, Richard Malcolm, Don Malcolm, Denise Dawes, Carol Laird, Sandra Poiser, Boyd Fletcher, Sonia Fletcher, Dwight Dixon, Colleen Dixon, and Marie Vicente and Brother Vicente. Class nine, Lincoln Pitter and Lost and Let's the Teacher. Claudette Pitter, members Kenroy Crawford, Margaret Crawford, Earl Reed, Charmaine Ryan, Lurley Morgan, Robin Morgan, Rafiq Hackshaw, and Sonnet Stulls, Clifford Stevenson, Shirley Thompson, Halcyon Barrett, Barbara Saltu, Sharon Morris, Delia Lloyd, Shari Wint Grant, and Choi Grant. And class 10, which is the youth class, teacher Ricardo Thompson, assistant teacher Audrey Chang. We have Nicole Crawford, Gabriel Swaby, Philip Williams Jr., Jaden Forbes, Abigail Swaby, Abigail Fletcher, Shane Fletcher, Ajani Chantelope, Roshana Malcolm, Akelia Chang, Rihanna Robinson, Zanika Grant, Katrina Little, Kavion Foster, Raheem Spencer, Demar Williams, and Malik, Malik Fletcher. So this concludes the class. Anybody who did not hear their name, you can just ask them to put your name on the class that you're sitting in, the record that you're, the class that you're sitting in. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Sister Sir. We're going to ask the teachers to just make one comment here at class where you are and collect the offering. And then we we'll invite Pastor to come forward and he will take us through um, some educational condition for different classes. And then after which, Elder Spence will give a preview of this week's lesson. So there's no need, just go to the class, teacher, five minutes and just go to the class and then let us spend and go a preview of the lesson and then um, pastor will take that.
Happy Sabbath, everybody. Okay, we just seek your attention as we do a brief uh, review of this very, very interesting lesson that we have studied during the course of this week. Extreme heat. Have we been feeling extreme heat? <laughs> oh, yes. The time has been really, really hot. And as a matter of fact, in some places, I understand is the first day of a record high in history for this year in terms of heat. Okay, and we trust that it is not the same as it pertains to our personal lives. Uh, let us just bow our heads for briefly as we pray. Loving Father, thank you so very much for taking us here safely. As we look briefly at this very important lesson, we seek your Holy Spirit guidance in Jesus' name. Yes, and uh, the, message, the memory text that we have, which came to us from Isaiah 53 and verse 10, it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Who is this speaking to? Who is this referring to? Christ, Jesus, our Savior, who went through the furnace, extreme heat. He suffered like no other man has suffered or will ever suffer. But thank God, he came through successfully, so he is our Savior. He's our example, and if we follow him, certainly we will be led in the right path. The lesson speaks uh, also about Abraham. And when we look at Abraham and what Abraham did, now God had promised that he would give him a son, the seed that would populate the entire uh, world. Now, God came to him and said, Abraham, I want you to kill that son. How would we deal with that, brothers and sisters? It, huh? it's, a, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a very hard task. But you know something? And if we get nothing else from the lesson, get this. Abraham knew the voice of God. Mm -hmm. How did he know God, that it was God speaking to him? Huh? He had a relationship with him. That's what we need to know, the voice of God. There are a lot of times when we pray, but we don't stop to listen to God speaking back to us. 
we need to know the voice of God. Interestingly also, the lesson does not only speak about Abraham, but the young man, Isaac, was a prime example of obedience. Because which young man these days, you know, in the, in the, in the teens, late teens, who are going to stand up and say, you know, make your father I'm going to find you, I'm going to play down, I'm going to kill you. An old man, he would have put up a resistance, but Isaac didn't. Okay. Huh? Yes. Um, Abraham saying to the Almighty, uh, God saying to Abraham, you're going to have your son. Your only begotten only son. son. Mm -hmm. Right? He's reminding Abraham that, listen, this is the one that you love the most. Exactly. And you're going to kill him. <laughs> and therefore, it looked bad on the side of God. Yes. But guess what happened? Abraham believed God. And he trusted in God that whatever happened, God cannot go wrong. Confidence, right? the trust that he had in God. Yeah. And the other point that I like to yes. make about Abraham um, relationship with we even have to be careful how much we tell our wives, you know. Because those mothers, blessed, blessed me, they love the children, especially their first boy child. They love the mother with a, they love the son with a perfect love. And God knows that He made sure Abraham got that in vision vision in the night that thank he did not have to wake Sarah to tell thank her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. The other thing we see also in the lesson is about um, uh, um, Hosea and he's with, uh, you know, the comparison there with Israel that his wife and, um, you know, it says his wife went to whoring and God says, look, go take her back. And every time I read that uh, book of Hosea, Hosea. You know, I say, man, what a man. The man, the, the man, the woman went all out. Three children, they say, and apparently none of them belong to Hosea. Yet still, God said, go take her back. And when he went for her, she was on the auction block. Right? What he paid for her? 15 pieces of silver. Whoa. The price of a slave, it took her back. God says, that's how God treats us, my brothers and sisters. We cannot be too far gone in sin that God will not have mercy upon us. Amen. So if we didn't get anything else from that, that's what it is. Then we look at Job. Job's experience. Man. <laughs> yes, Elamar, quickly. I don't have a very limited time, but... Yes. Yes. The circumstances are not just you know they are extreme, extreme heat. Extreme. So that's when the rubber hits the yes. road and we 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 test yes. how we really trust in God because you can't just have a superficial trust in God. But this is talking about genuine deep down trust in God Amen. when the heat is greatest. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So. Job lost everything, including his children. And here it is, his wife came to him and said, listen, my man, you don't see what you're going through. You know, you're still going, going to hold on to your faith in God. You don't see what is happening to you. Why don't you just curse God and die? But Job says what? You speak like a foolish woman. Hmm? Shall we expect good from the Lord? And, uh, you know, when little challenge come our way, we're going to give up? No. She so said Job worshipped God, held on to him in spite of. <clears throat> yes. Uh, the purpose of eat <clears throat> applied to gold is to. Yes. But in the life of Jesus, and, and, and even in the case of Job, was, was, was that type of heat necessary? The point I'm asking is, if, if the purpose of heat is to take away the dross that is in the gold, right? But yet such extreme, it was applied to almost uh, good lives. 
Elder, there's a, there's a quote that we always make, and I see it a lot of places. We may not laud your purpose, see, but all is well that's done by thee. And I recall last in last week's lesson, Job says he looked to the north, to the south, to the east, and the west, and he couldn't see God. But he says, I know the way that he takes. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So it is confidence in God. In spite of whatever is happening, God is there. And God is not going to take us to anything that he will not see us through. Paul. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the temperature of the heat is dependent on the demand. Remember that? God, I mean, Satan challenged God. Yes. And God had to turn up the heat enough, not just to test Satan as well. And to say to Satan, I have people on this earth, this earth. They can stand any test. So watch the temperature. And when he turn it up, he make it extra and extra. And God is there looking on Satan. And Satan is looking on Job. And God is watching, and they're watching each other. Yes. I, I, and God is there saying, I, I, this much I know that Job can endure. Satan, you can't test Job. Because to test Job, you have to come through me. Yes. So that is something I want us to appreciate. God is giving us enough to satisfy the adversary. And when the adversary is satisfied, we will be refined. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, when we think about um, Paul, the many challenges he went through, yet still, yet still, he held on to the mighty arm of God. And uh, then extreme heat, which closed the week, it talks about, you know, the three Hebrew boys, you realize they faced extreme heat because that heat was so hot after the furniture was heated seven times hotter uh, that when the men threw them in, they themselves were killed by the heat. Yet still, praise God, the three Hebrew boys were saved. He says, and the king says, I see four men. And the fourth one is like the son of God. Amen. I just want to close off here. Uh, to share something with you. Let quickly, um, yes, it says, Abraham's readiness to sacrifice his own son in obedience to God teaches us an unreserved trust in God, even when God's commands do not make sense. Hosea's painful relationship with his unfaithful wife reveals God's own suffering caused by our unfaithfulness. His continued presence in our lives <clears throat> and his work to restore relationships with a wayward, backslidden people. Job's resolute loyalty to God, even when his own wife was calling him to curse God, teaches us that avoiding suffering and death is not the ultimate goal in life. Together with Job, Paul teaches us that love and faithfulness to God, his kingdom, and his mission in the world is the most fulfilling experience of Christian life. Of course, there are things we do not understand, but the Christian goes through suffering and death, armed with the Apostle Paul's views on the struggle. Who shall separate us? from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. May God help us to go through whatever extreme heat we might be going through with the assurance that God is with us. Thank you.
page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a very pleasant Sabbath again to all and those who are worshiping with us this morning on the various platforms. We want to welcome you. Today is a very special um, Sabbath for us in this district. It is the Sabbath that we close the week of revival. And I'm hastening to tell you that um, in as much as the speaker wants to be here today um, for the divine hour, um, he will not be. And so we will close off officially the seminar the, the, later this evening. I can quickly tell you this is one of our uh, ministerial graduates for some time now. And he was called to the North Conference and um, to take up pastoral, to take up pastoral assignments. And so we want to commend him and thank God for him. Last night, he got a call that there's some adjustments. He should be installed like next week or two weeks from now, next week. But he got a call last night as some adjustments to the leadership there. And uh, I think the president had to travel, so he has to be there this morning. So I was told last night that you will have to speak today. But we find, oh, amen. So um, I am, I don't, I'm not quite sure I can get away like um, Isaac. But God be praised, that's, that's good card, that's good ticket. <laughs> So having said that, um, I want to express um, thanks to the superintendent, the Sabbath School Department for reaching this stage in restructuring the church. When Sabbath School is structured properly and firing off all eight, the church is firing. Amen? Eight cylinders. So we want to say thanks to the superintendent and our teachers and all those who are engaged in Sabbath school. Now, having said that, I'm going to share a presentation with you. I did mention last week on the four foci or fundamentals of Sabbath school. But before I get there, we want to do some emphasis here, making it clear that the Sabbath school is the evangelism beat of the church. Now, some people think it's a personal ministry, but if Sabbath school is not functioning, personal ministries department cannot be effective. By the time we go through today's presentation, I hope that you will appreciate that. But before I get there, let me give you a quick preview of the rest of the year for 2022, amen? Beginning with evangelism. And bear in mind that the first few Sabbaths that we spoke, there are three things that I shared with you for the district. And what I'm going to share with you now, I'll be sharing with the other churches. One of them, evangelism, membership care, and stewardship. Hello? We want to bear those in mind as we go. I'm going to emphasize a little on evangelism this morning. And when, when I do the presentation, it, it will be in the context of the Sabbath school. So while I'm getting there, you are now in classes, in your, in your respective class. We have just through a uh, Revival and Revelation Seminar. And for those who did not get it, I hope it is just a few. We didn't see everybody or a number of persons online, but you'd have missed something. For those who were not able to, granted, we can do it again. 
we will now be getting into, in fact, it is a conference-wide evangelistic effort, Christ for the Crisis Evangelistic Series, beginning September 3 to October 2, I think. The evangelist is Pastor Everett Brown, president of the Jamaica Union. Amen. If you, if you did hear what I said a while ago, just raise your hand. You heard me, so raise your hand. All who heard me a while ago, raise your hand. Okay, very good. Now, that is a central Jamaica conference crusade. Every single church in central Jamaica conference will be involved, is actually involved as we speak. Amen? This district is involved. This church is involved. Amen? And every member in this church is involved. Amen? Amen. However, it is voluntary involvement. Is that okay? So no one is forcing you. But the idea here is Evangelism, oh, by the way, I have, I have a breathing exercise for you. Breathing exercise, breathing, okay. So before I go any further, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in three parts. I'm gonna do number one now. So let's, let's inhale and exhale. You want to stand, stand, yes, that's a good idea. Inhale, today, by the way, I did say to the church, it's gonna, it's gonna be exception, Elbert. Uh, they still work with me. So you inhale and exhale. Okay, come again. Very good. You may be seated. That easy. You didn't know it was that easy, right? So when I, when I start a sermon today, I'm going to do exercise number two, breathing exercise. Part two is three parts. And when I'm finishing, I'll do the third part. Is that okay? All right, my wife will remind me. She won't make me forget this. <laughs> so back to the evangelism. Now, having said that, we are asking each member of the church to register at least one person, at least one person for the lesson. Now, this is a different lesson. You have never seen this lesson before. Is a new lesson coming out from the conference. It was written by one of our pastors, um, Dr. Kemar Douglas. The lesson is not for members. The lesson is for your prospect. It's for your friend and relative whom you want to see accept Christ. Are we together on that? Okay. So what the process is, are we not just giving the lesson to any and everybody? It is 16 lessons in the, in the series. You have to register. You have to register that prospect. And I did ask my technician to make the card available on the um, slide, so on, on the projector, so that you can see it. While he's coming over that, then, thank you, beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, so it's Christ for the Crisis Evangelistic Series, and you can read that. Name of the interest, that's the name of your prospect or the person that you want to give the lesson to. I'm taking time out with this, the, the, the telephone number and address. Let me quickly say also that this can be done on soft copy for those who want to register your prospect online, and we will share that information with you. So they're asking the, you who will be registering your prospect to Pick the appropriate box, um, but is, whether it's a family, or a friend to the, to the prospect, is your coworker or is your neighbor. So you, you are the one registering the persons, so you are going to tick the appropriate box. Is it a family member? Is it a friend? Is it a coworker or a neighbor? And you also take if it's a former member, is a member of another denomination, Somebody help me read, just to make sure you're also seeing it. It's not a member of a church, and the church, this church here should be interpreted as denomination. 
is not a member of any other denomination. And then you now, you're going to put your contact number. You are the person who is registering the person. So contact person, you put your name there. Name of the church. In this case, it is, in this district, it is the Inverness, Heatfield, or Knockpatrick. Knockpatrick. Telephone number. The church has a telephone number. Church has a telephone number. No, it should. And if you don't, you will need to get it now because your church should have a telephone number and an email address. No, the, the church. Because the way it is being done, once a person is registered and the information is clicked and sent in, it goes straight to the conference office. All right, and the pastor, as well as the care coordinator. I will tell you about that. So really it is. However, granted that number can be there as well. All right. So the name of the church, telephone number, or, or your, your telephone number in your church, but they need to know the church that is um, the person you're working with. So far, so good as far as the card is concerned. Any question before I go to one other step? Any question? Okay. Once that card is turned in, once the card is turned in to the person that ministries department, the elder or myself, the person that ministries department and the Sabbath school, we're asking the Sabbath school teachers and the person that ministries department to be responsible for this. Once that card is turned in, you will get the lesson. The lesson is sent to the person, not to the member. The lesson is given to the person. If we give you the lesson to give the member, it is straight, if we give you the lesson to give the prospect or the interest, it, is, it goes straight to. Then the lesson is turned in if it is physical and it is, it is corrected by the responsible person or persons who are set up to do that. If it is online, it is corrected online. And uh, that is done until all 16 lessons are completed. Now, they are very, very easy questions. Very, very easy um, questions that you, once you get it and start looking at it, you yourself will appreciate that. For example, one of the questions is God interest, interested, is God interested in your welfare? Whether we are happy or unhappy, whether we are in need or not, Philippians 4.19, things like those. All right. So what I'm going to do at this point is to ask, I gave out some cards. I'm going to ask, beginning with our elders, we're going to ask the pastor and the elder, our elders, to make sure that they are participating in the registration slash evangelistic series. So we want to give, make sure all our elders who are here and our officers receive a card. Is that okay? And then I'm going to ask for volunteers in the respective class. Talk, talking with our teachers, if you want to volunteer to register someone to do the lesson, just raise your hand and you will get a card. Once you get the card, take it to the person, talk with the person, let them know that this we are taking them through a series of lessons if they would like to do the lesson. Once it is signed up, then you bring back the card to us, um, in this case to Elder um, Leslie, and we take it from there. You'll get the lesson for the person or the lessons. So one hand over there is a question. Go ahead. Is that in the district? Doesn't matter. Anywhere from all over the world. They're abroad, they can get the, um, the soft copy. All right, and I will give you the information for the soft copy. All right, so let me see the hands of those who want to register at least one person. Okay, I'm gonna ask the some cards are out. Please distribute so that we can move on. We are asking you now to return the card to us no later than next Sabbath. No, if, yes, that, there is it. Suppose I don't get anybody by next Sabbath. Exactly. You may or may not. But we are asking you a very good question. Are, <laughs> she didn't know that you're here. <laughs> We're asking you as best as possible. So the person you have in mind, you may not get them this week. Or you may, you, you may have four persons, Sister Williams, and you only get one this week, that kind of thing. So take them in as you get them. All right, so a very good question. Thank you very much.
All right, so we want to make sure everybody gets at least one card. You can take more than one, but at least one card. And then we want to make sure we have the number of persons who receive those cards. All right, having said that, once you turn in the cards and they're registered, we will give you the lesson to give the individual. And then we arrange from there. Once it is finished, Sister Williams, we take them back, mark it, and let the person know how well they're doing, as the case may be. All right. Having said that, the last thing I want to say on that is that this district, this district, a question? Please, go ahead. Yes, but if they need your assistance, you help. And if you need, if you can't help, you talk to one of us. All right, maybe you have a school teacher or the, one of the elders, as the case may be. Fine, very good question, beautiful. Maybe I should open for question. Any other question? And as you go, you can ask question, that is okay. I'm taking time out on this because The real purpose of the church is evangelism, you know. Hello? And if as a member of the church, you're not evangelizing, you are not breathing. Amen? I'm going to, when we get to the second um, exercise, breathing exercise, we say some more on that. Ah. So don't worry about um, church today and those who are watching online. I'm the speaker, so I will know when to stop. It's a good thing. Now, having said that, any questions so far? The next thing I want you to appreciate, and this is another thing where I like the Sabbath school unit, and that's a word that we can get to get accustomed to, Sister Sir. Sabbath school unit, the action unit. When we come next week, Sabbath school teachers, you will need to have a care coordinator in your Sabbath school. If you don't have that as yet, apart from the teacher, identify someone to be the care coordinator. Did you get that? What is the function of the care coordinator? The first 10 or so minutes. Oh, I don't want to miss this. Now, I think I'm going to hurt somebody a little. What is good hurt? Including my, including my wife. Listen to this very carefully. The Sabbath? No, maybe I should ask you the question. What's the primary reason of the Sabbath school? What's the main thing for the Sabbath school? All right, when you have, when you start the Sabbath school, what's the main thing that should be done? The lesson study, right? Right? The lesson study. Isn't that true? So listen to me very carefully. And by the way, let me ask another question. I'm kind of still new to you, especially with some of these things. Have you ever seen, beginning with your superintendent, Sabbath school teachers, Have you ever seen a Sabbath school manual? I'm taking time out with this. Have you ever seen a Sabbath school manual? Okay. Sabbath school manual that shows or teaches the Sabbath school teacher superintendent how to conduct Sabbath school? Okay, you will need to see that. If you're going to function in Sabbath school properly, you'll need to see that. And I hope I can, we can bring that up as we go. Please, this is, a, this, is, this is not a regular Sabbath. So bear with me. The main function, the main thing that to be happening in a Sabbath school when you come to the class within that period of time is a lesson study. Amen? So, superintendents, the Sabbath school is not a program where the Sabbath school superintendent comes with a long program and a lot of readings from different books that 
is not a purpose or structure or format or proceedings of the Sabbath school. The Sabbath school superintendent guides, see to it that everything is okay there and the teachers get there and do what they are supposed to do. Now, I think I am not saying this at the right place. Maybe I should be saying it to the superintendents and the Sabbath school first separately. So forgive me. That slip out. Amen. That just slip past. But we'll say it again. But I'm making the point. And you give all the time for the lesson study. Okay. Now, I'm not quite sure if next week you'll be able to do that because you're accustomed to certain things already. I'm not quite sure. But it'll be good if the superintendent can come do what you have to do, your preliminaries, and don't miss your mission story. The manual will tell you that whenever you are doing, if you have to abridge anything, you don't miss the mission story. Okay. So having said all of that, I'm making the point that if, if, if the Sabbath school is going to be effective, you have to follow a certain format. And if, you get, if you're going to get the evangelistic part of it and, the, and the, the membership here part of it, you have to follow a certain format. I'm coming to you. The one aspect of the membership here is the care coordinator. That's why I remember it. The care coordinator is the person that gets up after the blanks are done and find out from the class what happened. Anybody's missing? Uh, how was your week? Uh, what do we need to do for you next week? Are you having a problem? And then arrangement is made in that class to either call those who are missing or to see to those who have a concern. So there is no Sabbath a member is missing and they don't get a call by the evening or the following morning. None at all. It should never happen. No way. And if a visitor comes to your class, we will be having, I think, a special class for that. But if a visitor happens to be in your class, no, it's a, it's a new believers class, different. If a visitor comes in, I'm taking time out to this. If a visitor comes in your class, normally we should have what is called a care interest coordinator at the door, maybe two doors at the church, that is the friendly church on the roadside, right? No visitor should pass through this door without a warm welcome and a provision to return. So we want to make sure that we have those things in place. I told you that we're giving you a preview for the rest of the year into 2023, right? Okay. Those things we want to make sure they are there. So back to the Sabbath school unit. And we are asking, I'm going to pause at this one. There are three things. I see Hannah Labart. I'm coming to you. There are three things I want to tell you about the Sabbath school unit. But I'm going to tell you this number one, and then I wait a little. I'm not giving you two minutes at the same time. So by next week, I'm asking the teachers. You can't, oh, I don't want to miss this. When you look at the manual, the manual tells you, superintendents and Sabbath school teachers, that an effective teacher spends somewhere to eight to 10 hours with your members during the week. Yep. Not necessarily one member, but with your members. Now, that's how demanding the Sabbath school teacher is. And that reminds me, friend, that we are going to be having some teachers training. I'm coming to that very quickly. But having said that, it's extremely important for you to have the care coordinator. And when we get to that, we can speak more about that. Amen? Elaborate. Hey, Pastor. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> yes, Pastor. Can I recommend that you change one word in a statement that you made? A please while do. Ago? Please do. 
my recommendation is that, and you said each unit will come for their lesson study. Can I recommend that you change review. the lesson review? Yeah, beautiful. Because each student must have a quarterly study during the course of the week. And then when we come Good. on Sabbath, we come to review, review. You and correct. put everything together. Yeah. Thank review. You. Thank you, sir. Review is the, is the right word. All right. Uh, by the way, that's one of the reasons. That is one of the reasons why the Sabbath school teacher has so much, have to spend so much time during the week. Because one of the responsibilities of the Sabbath school teacher is to call your member and to find out if they are understanding the lesson. Do, are you studying? Or if you give the member an assignment, and I recommend, I'm taking time out to this, because you just redo your Sabbath school, right? I'm recommending that you give, uh, no, this is, I will have to do another presentation, a full PowerPoint presentation on that, in how you actually do the lesson study and assign um, assignments, give assignments to your Sabbath school teachers, I mean, your members. But since I started, I can tell you this. One of the best ways to help your Sabbath school members to study is to give them at least one sub what assignment for next week. So maybe you may ask a member of the class to do Monday. Another two join together and do Wednesday. Because the Sabbath school is not for you to come up here and teach. So what happened now, if you give assignments, you call the members during the week and say, how are you getting on with Wednesday? How are you getting on with Tuesday? Hello? Because, listen to this very carefully, if as a teacher in the Sabbath school, you find yourself talking more than all the class put together, if as a Sabbath school teacher, any one morning, you find yourself talking, teaching, more than the class put together, you're in problem. And in order to do that, you have to structure it in such a way that people talk. They are to express themselves. They are to tell you what they review. And in order to do that, you have to help them throughout the week, uh, among other things. Okay, I didn't know I was going to spend so much time on this. But having said that, this brings me to the next point before the presentation. So we want to start our, we talk about the Tuesday, we talk about that. We want to start our election of officers early in the month of October. And one of the first groups that we are going to be doing training for is our Sabbath school teachers, our Sabbath school personnel. Now, it's not that you don't know what to do, but we have to work together as far as that is concerned. And the next thing we want to look at is our teachers class, um, where you look at the lesson before we start teaching the Sabbath morning. Elder. Oh, great. Thank you. If a visitor comes to your class, that is a big thing. Hello? We talk about coming through the door. It's a big thing, and especially if the person is invited or even walk in. If they're invited by a member of your class, you make a big thing out of it. By the way, do we have any visitor this morning? Not a member of this church, you're not a Seventh day Adventist, you're just visiting. Raise your hand, raise your hand. There you go. Amen. So I hope you are in a class that will about to do what we are talking about. Now, when the Holy Spirit takes someone from some place and you don't know what they went through that the week or the month. They may be praying, I really want to be at the church. And they walk into your church, into your class, which is the first contact, by the way. Isn't that so? That's a big thing. And we are saying to our teachers, give special recognition to our visitors who come into your class. They should be find out what is happening, where they are from, and let them talk as much as they would want to talk. You're not praying, but you want the basic, um, there's a term that they call it. Uh, 
information that you can get, for want of a better word. But the, 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 the member should not leave without feeling the warmth of the teacher and the class. And certainly, if the member wants to come back next week, you should know how the member can get back here. How did you get here? Did you drive? Did you take a taxi? Are you coming back next week? Uh, we love to have you next week. Um, how are you going to get here? Can we give you a call? And I want to suggest that we have some kind of cards or so that we can share our information. Teachers keep some booklets, keep some little um, tracks. Teachers, I'm not doing a teacher's training class, but I'm saying to this, keep some tracks and I'll have some books and one of it in your class. So when you have a visitor, these are special persons. Thank you, Ella. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the seriousness of the Sabbath school class. When it is effective, when you start evangelism like that, when you have a big crusade coming up, you have a problem, little or no problem. It's not so because the Sabbath school unit is active. When your Sabbath school unit is active, you have little or no problem. All right. Having said that, if there's no more questions, I'm going to go into the presentation. Yes, please. Please put it on the, on the slide for me. Please go. Um. Yes, Pastor. In recent times, we have been having our lesson review on a whole. Perhaps it has been compromised because of the COVID situation. But the ideal is for the Sabbath school units to exactly. function. When there are some people who are not public speakers and they will remain silent, you will hear nothing from them. They will not make any input because they are not going to stand and say anything. And there are some people who are good at speaking and they will dominate the Sabbath school and they will pass on all their thoughts and the little man in the corner will have something to say, but for one reason or the other, they might not get the opportunity to do that. So the Sabbath school unit is such an integral and critical part of our church. When we are in the unit, we can bond together. We can understand each other. We can share our thoughts together. And we can learn so Amen. much more. While, while the general Sabbath school has its place, but the norm is supposed to be the Sabbath school. Very much. Unit. Thank you very much. A Sabbath school in one is an exception. And um, she reminds me that that dominance can also take place in the small unit. But when we are doing Sabbath school teachers training, we train our teachers how to do that. And some of you know that already. It's a matter of group dynamics and what of it. You know who, who are always talking and you know who. And so you, you, we, we, we are trained how to make sure that you have total involvement, that kind of a thing. Okay, thank you very much, um, sister, sister, you know, I'm sorry, sister, sister Paul. Okay, so we are on the slide, um, the Sabbath school experience, and we're looking at the next slide. Um, we, we are going to the, follow me, the four emphases of Sabbath school. Last week when I told her that I was going to do this, I, um, I did mention them to you. One is fellowship. Can you read? Can anybody help me to read? Fellowship, outreach, Bible study, and of course, mission. I'm asking our Sabbath school personnel to bear these in mind. These are the four main emphases of the Sabbath school. Fellowship. Now, there you go as a unit where six, eight of you are. And I am tempted to do some kind of a thing with the Sabbath school. But even if I don't finish this today. Fellowship is not just Sabbath morning. Amen? At Sabbath school, you plan fellowship outside. Maybe, and remind me, 
fellowship outside. I missed somebody. Elder, I don't want to miss this. The next group that is in your Sabbath school, I'm coming back to fellowship. I don't have to be inside. But there's a group that I don't want to miss. The shut-ins. The shut-ins. Those of you who have your list, Sabbath school teachers, I'm going to ask you to identify what is happening in our COVID. We either have to blame COVID-19 or thank COVID-19. COVID-19 reset how we worship. Okay. So there are some members, be it you, senior, as the case may be, and I'm happy I remember this. They're not coming out physically. They are not watching online. And then now the list that you have, you may need the help of other departments. But the list that you have, you need to know these individuals. It's not just a list we give to you. But you need to know what is happening to these members. Are they watching online? Um, are they studying the lesson? Who is attending to them? Listen to this very carefully. Some of them may be watching 3ABN. Some of them may be watching both, and especially our shut-ins. If you are a member of a church, in this case, Patrick, and you're fellowshipping with Hope, you're fellowshipping with 3ABN, you hardly hear from or see any of your members of Nakpachi. Your fellowship membership is with those places. Hello? Yeah. And it is very serious. So I am asking the teachers, the list that you have is not just a list. Find out what is happening to these. And I'm emphasizing our shut-ins. Because sometimes, and I know you may have a mechanism here where over the time you know where your shuttings are, but our shuttings should not be left out of the fellowship. Amen? The shuttings should not be left out of the fellowship. So you have to find a way now how we're going to fellowship with them. You may have to be visiting them. Some of you have been calling them. And some of them, um, sometimes when you're going out someplace, they can come with you, depending on what it is or how it is. But a lot of individuals would have lost the synergy, the love, the togetherness, the fellowship of the church over the past few years. We have to get it back. We have to get it back. And it is through the Sabbath school. Amen? So we're going to ask the work with that. So fellowship is extremely important. So I was making the point that fellowship is not just, and, and when you come Sabbath morning for that half an hour, one hour, you have little no time to fellowship. Maybe you can run a little joke here and then bam, listen, study. You have to go to that plan of time. But you can take your Sabbath school on that street, on that tree. Go down to a park. Drive out. Go to each other's home. And just talk. Fellowship. Amen? The other one we want to look at is outreach. And I'm just running these by you. The outreach has to do with uh, outreach, Bible study, and mission. So let me go down because there's an emphasis. Read that um, quote for me, please. Somebody's going to help me read. The Sabbath school was developed to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ in response to the command of Jesus. And in the setting, in loyalty to this original purpose, the Sabbath school continues to communicate the good news with the objective to. Win, hold, and train for Jesus Christ, men and women, youth, boys and girls, in all the world. This objective is carried forward through the following four areas that we're looking at. And you can find that in the SDA Bible um, Encyclopedia. Okay, now having said that, looking at fellowship, and, and especially for new believers, Somebody's going to read that for me. You have a microphone. Until you get a microphone, I will do that. But I'd like somebody to help me. Not forsaking the assemble of ourselves of together. together. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. 
and is so much the more as we see the day approaching. All right, listen to this very carefully. COVID-19 has redefined assembly. Hello? When an elderly member or a person is sick for whatever reason, can come out physically and they are consistently on the Zoom with you that assemble. Hello? I want you to get that. But that reminds me also that for those of us, and, 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 and I think we talk about this with the leadership of the church, we have to prepare now for not just physical worship, but also for proper online worship. Hello? If we don't do that, we are going to lose a significant portion of our members to other places. I want you to understand what does that mean. Some people were already predisposed not to want to come to church for whatever reason. Okay, be that as it may. Some people should just not come out. By the way, COVID is still around and we have thing the parks, right? Monkey parks. Do you understand what is that? Okay. Now, having said that, we have to rearrange how we plan church and function as a church in order and at the same time care for all the members at different times and places. And therefore, we have to see to it that the technical aspect of our church is up, where the Zoom is running, hello, and running properly. That when you say 7 o'clock, it's 7 o'clock. And when I plan a program, it is precise. Do you understand? Because what is that, you know, here's an advantage. We are now privileged to minister to the world. Do you understand what is happening? And let us not get stuck in the transition zone from what was to what is going to be. Amen? So not forsaking the assembly, and we're making the point there that those who can come out should always be out as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. As we get to the clo uh, closer to the end of time, it becomes necessary, even more necessary, next slide, for us to be in each other's company, to share with each other and to care for each other. If, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Now, I'm, I don't have time to say a lot on this, but I hope you get the message as it relates to the importance of fellowship. Uh, so let me ask, uh, I'm not going to ask a question, maybe because sometimes you, you, you don't want to answer. Um, have, you, have you ever come to church, or is there anyone here, is a rhetorical question, is there anyone here Is there anyone here who you have always been coming to this church, maybe for three, four, five years, even with sparse attendance, you have over half of the members that you have never spoken to? One way or the other. One way or the other. Half. By the way, you know that church is clique, right? Church has cliques. And by the time, and nothing, hey, listen, nothing is wrong with cliques. You know? It's good, especially when used properly. So by the time you finish relating to your clique, it is very good. Everybody, it's time to go home, or you, you understand? So I want to throw this out. And to ask you as a member, are we talking about serious churching here? Take it as your responsibility to reach out to somebody else. Hello? Say, hi, how are you? My name is XYZ, and it's good to see you. We're talking about serious fellowship. Amen? Listen, take, take, take it as an assignment for next month then, right? Maybe you want to start with your class? I don't know. Maybe we want to start with our class. But don't let the rest of the year, as a regular member of this church, we're talking about serious fellowship. As a regular member of this church, don't let January 23 come and you don't say at least hello to another member. Come on, man.
Amen. We're talking about fellowship. And it makes a big difference. Exhortation and teaching and admonishing. That's some of the things that you'll have on the fellowship. And we'll have time. When you have all of those, that is what is fellowship. There's no fellowship without exhorting each other. There's no fellowship without teaching and learning from each other. There's no fellowship without admonishing each other. Amen. And sometimes we do it in different ways. Sometimes it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. Question. Any question you want to ask? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't, okay, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying, because I don't want to take, I don't want to respond to what I don't understand. All right, so repeat, please. Right. Okay. Let me see if I can start where I'm understanding you. All right. That is an interesting observation, right? Amen? Now, if I am going to Mandeville and I want a ride, and I'm standing on the street side, is either I'm going to boom ride, right? Boom a ride. Or you bigger ride. If I'm standing on the street side and I see someone coming and I want to ride, it is my responsibility to push out my hand because I know where I'm driving to, but I don't know where you want to go. Hello? Okay. Now, having said that, having said that, having said that, nothing is particular wrong if a fellow brother or a sister slow down and say, can I give you a ride where you're going? Hello? And if the rain is falling, you don't drop them outside, you take them straight to the gate. That kind of a thing. So it's really, it's really two ways. And we want to make sure it is understood. And you don't say, Mark, I'll pass you. Because sometimes I don't see, I was telling my wife the other day, I don't see outside this part of the glasses. Don't say, if you see me and you want the right stuff, and I'll be willing and happy to take you. Amen. But that's how it is. And we want to make sure that that kind of love and fellowship and care for each other. Let me rush on. Any other question? All right. Disinterested benevolence. We're looking at outreach. Um, I think I'm going to brush this because, but let's me let me just take this, far, this um, quotation in outreach. Um, yes, yes, please. Go ahead, Ella. Let's Ella. Let's yes. Uh, LLX, you almost get me LBW. You can defend me. <laughs> you know, interesting. It's, that, sorry, it's interesting that um, when you're going to use the mic, when you're going to speak, use the mic. That's okay, LLX. We all heard it, but maybe not those online. It's, it's a very keen observation. And you almost get me LBW. Because for some reasons, the other two churches, I would have gone to their children department more than once. Heat feel and, and it was only this church that I would have gone to their children department until this morning. Almost. <laughs> almost. 
But you're right. And 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 um uh, interesting, you know, have a nice the conversation with them. And um the whole idea was they need to know me as the pastor, and they need to know you as the elder. So every now and then pass by. And I'm not gonna tell you what I ask them to tell their parents. Yes, elder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And I've never gone to a church where I don't make that interaction. And I've never left a church as a district pastor without going to the children and tell them that your pastor is leaving. Never, ever. And I normally introduce myself as early as possible. Okay. Outreach. That's it. I hope you're enjoying what is happening. There is a need. Oh, the next one I want to come to is the mission because the time is, is, is running. Um, so let's go down to mission. And then we are going to take this down, make some closing statements, Bible study. Um, we're going on to Bible study. We have covered a good amount, and, and I'm saying to the Sabbath school teachers, that which, did I say I was going to come back to something? That which we have said, please bear that in mind as you take control of your Sabbath school from next week. I want to go, I'm, I'm going to take this down, but I'm going to, I want to say something on Bible study. So you're taking me down to Bible study, and that's the last thing I have time to do here. All right, so you are at Bible study, and the next one is information. And, um, and this is the next function of the Sabbath school. So we talk about, what are, the, what are the ones we talk about? Can anybody tell me? Outreach, mission. Okay, now I'm not going to say a lot of, on mission because I, I actually practicalize the mission part of it by the cards by the cards that you would have gotten. And we want you now to take that as a practical way of reaching out. Is that okay? So those who receive your cards, do what you have to do and let us know. But I want to spend the last, um, while the plat other persons in the platform party are putting themselves together, I want to spend the last few minutes to look on Bible study. One of the functions our foci of the Sabbath school is to teach. It's to teach your Sabbath school members how to study the Bible. How to study the Bible. That's the, that's the first and simplest, the first place and simplest way of teaching how to study the Bible. So for example, you will know, well, the, the quarterly for that matter is laden with Bible text, isn't that so? It's laden with Bible text. Now, so teachers, you don't have to have your members have a school in your unit um, studying to prepare a sermon or studying the Bible, whatever. The basic things you want for the Bible study um, go to the next slide. We'll talk about Bible study, information, transformation. The basic thing that you want is devotion. The first thing that the, clap, the, the um, Sabbath school unit will do as far as Bible study is concerned, go right down to um, information, transformation. The first thing as far as Bible study is concerned in the context of the, of the um, Sabbath school unit is devotion. The personal devotion of the member your Sabbath school. Okay. But the quarterly is designed for that. Quarterly is designed for that. Quarterly have daily devotion. There are some of us that we ask the question, do I, should I study seven days or should I study, or should I study, should I study seven days or should I study the seven days? Huh? And then somebody will just take up the quarterly and study the seven days. Okay, I'm not getting into that. Maybe at another time and place. But I'm saying to your Sabbath school teachers now, 
when we talk about Bible study, is a way of teaching or sharing with your Sabbath school class how to study the Bible. For example, take the memory verse. The memory verse comes with a Bible text, isn't that so? Fine. And so you ask the, and there was a time when we come and repeat the, Bible, the, the memory verse, isn't that so? That's a good way of doing that. But in addition to that, we want to encourage our members to have a devotion that relates directly to your life, Bible study. Huh? Okay, what are we talking here about? Everything in your life, you can find several Bible texts to relate to it. If it is health, you can find Bible texts personally. Isn't that so? If it is finances, you can find Bible texts to do that. Whatever it is, you can find Bible texts. And what is happening here, I'm speaking to the Sabbath school. We are saying now, and here is where you have a one-to-one, -one, are your devotion? Share with your Sabbath school members the importance of devotion. And this is, may not be a lesson study, but the importance of devotion. And you may take a Bible text or two for a particular devotion, as the case may be. But what is happening here, when you study your Bible, you are informed. Amen? Bible study gives information. So it may be on a particular subject, on a particular topic, as the case may be, but whatever it is, you are getting information. What if I were to tell you that there is no intelligent transformation without proper information. Hello? There is no intelligent transformation without proper information. So depending on what you are informed, that depending on how you're informed, it is going to determine how intelligent you are. Isn't that so? Well, one of the problems that we are having is that we are not experiencing the spiritual transformation that we ought to have. And if we are not spiritually fed, which is from the word of God, you cannot experience spiritual transformation. Hello, somebody. This is the point that I want to finish on this morning. And it is that serious. And here I'm saying, I'm saying all of this in the context of the Sabbath school. So Sabbath school teachers, that's how serious your role or responsibility is. So I'm going back to where I started as I come to a close. We are going to be starting or election of officers early enough. I figured you're accustomed to that. The manual, by the way, says that you start the last quarter. So they're going to start early in October. I want to get through that very quickly so we can start some training beginning with our teachers. Because come 2023, as we go through this evangelistic series, we're expecting to have new members, by the way. Hello? Is that okay? We're expecting to have new members. And we are going to do some presentations along that line. But the important thing here, we want to feel as a family. Is anything wrong with that? Is it okay to feel as a family? We ought to feel as a family. We want to feel as a family. And so we want to feel it. You get my point? We want when you see a brother or sister anywhere on the road, not because not just in your Sabbath school unit, but as a member of the North Patrick Church, you feel happy and you feel good. You know? Yeah, and I'm proud to say I'm a member of the Knock Patrick Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm a member of the Heatfield Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm a member of Inverness. And by the way, you have to love each other for the other churches too. Is that okay? When you see Heatfield member, you see Knock I mean, Inverness, we are one in this district, that kind of a thing. Fellowship and the sweet fellowship. The more we fellowship, the more we love and care for each other, is the happier we are going to be. And the happier we are, the more work we'll get done. And the main thing where we are here is to evangelize. Amen. And to bring others to the foot of the cross. God bless you. We'll say some more on this as we prepare for next segment. Thank you. Bless you. Let us stand as we pray to this. Let's stand. Let's stand. Heavenly Father who art in heaven, you who have put your church together 
there is no denomination in the world with the structure, unique structure, beneficial structure like that of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we are happy to be a part. It is designed for us to love and care for each other and to win souls for your kingdom. We can say that with certainty. And we are happy to know that we are a part of this, but sometimes we don't quite understand. And I pray even as we go through sessions like this, that we'll grow to love you more. We'll grow to learn of you more. We'll grow to love and appreciate each other more, not just as unit members and members of a church, because we recognize that unless we are united, unless we are having sweet fellowship, Satan wants to destroy us by dividing and to conquer. But we pray that your Holy Spirit will synergize us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will pull us together. We pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to know how to love each family member in our own home. And when we come to church as a family, we, we, we want to come to church. We want to hear each other. We want to share with each other. There's joy and happiness in the house of God. We thank you for the privilege of doing so even now. Because the time may be coming and we don't know how soon that is. But we can't do this. We can't minister to others. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us the strength, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the fortitude to do so. Thanks for being with us and for hearing and answering your people now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. All right, Pastor, thanks very much for those information. But we hope that we have taken it quite seriously. We're inviting you to be at church, God's willing, next Sabbath at 9.15. Please, please, church begins at 9.15. And we're looking forward that you'll be here for 9.15. Now that the class has reorganized, come early to know where your seat will be. God bless you. Until next week, same time, same place. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Kindly be attentive to the following announcements. The Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Churches presents a virtual camp from August 2 to 7 for junior teens and the seniors. Brother Jaden Forbes will be the delegate that will represent our senior youth. The fifth Inter-American Pathfinders Camporee will be held in Jamaica on April, April 4 to 8, 2023. The Thanksgiving service for the life of Sister Marcia Gordon will be on August 7 at 10.30 a.m. at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Knockpatrick. We are seeking your continued prayers for the following persons and their families. Brother Aston and Marjorie Powell, Sister Sahai Morris, Elder Philip Williams, Sister Erica Slowly, the Gordons and Barrett families, and Elder Peter. In addition, please visit call and or text the bereaved and the shut-in members. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, Berry Hill, invites us to their evening of praise and fellowship on Sunday, August 21 at 3 p.m., the theme is I Hear Heaven. Mm -hmm. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, Bethel in Richmond, 
invites us to their Jamaica Day celebration under the theme, Reigniting the Community for Greatness, on Monday, August 1 at 10 a.m., dress code, the national colors. The Thanksgiving service for the life of Sister Silda Guthrie, and she is the mother of Sister Brother Norris Gordon's wife, right? It will be held on August 8th at 11 a.m. at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Knock Patrick. The interment will be at Melrose Cemetery. Sister Marcia Gordon's funeral will be on the 7th, and Sister Silda, Silda Guthrie's funeral will be on the 8th. Potluck Sabbaths resume next Sabbath, August 6th. Come wrap with our pastor and experience meaningful fellowship. The district beach trip to Harmony Beach Park, Montego Bay will be on Sunday, August 21. Buses will leave our church grounds at 6 a.m. sharp. Please see Sister Tanisha Price regarding payments. Youth Sabbath will be on August 20th under the theme, Under Construction, Rebuilding from Inside Out. Our AOI program this afternoon at 4 p.m. will be under the theme, Dealing with Drugs and Alcohol Abuse. There will be a literature and religious commentary book display here during AY this afternoon by Brother Dijon McKenzie, a literature evangelist in training from NCU. The Seventh-day Adventist Church Royal Flats will conduct our AY program here on Sabbath, Sabbath August 13, under the theme, Youth and Spirituality. Our AY program on August 6th will be at the Knockpatrick Community Park under the theme, God in Nature. Sister Bernice Dixon's surgery was successful and we are encouraging everybody to continue to pray for her full recovery. Sister Ivory Burke, who was hospitalized last week and that's Brother Omar Hutchins' mother, Hutchie, right? Sister Ivory Burke, she's now at home and she's still in need of our prayers. The Manchester Youth Federation will host its parish sports day on August 28th. Come and represent your district. The new CJC CUNA coordinator for the family indemnity plan is Mrs. Denise Brown. Her post takes effect immediately. She can be contacted at 984 Five five seven six to seven, or five five two ninety four ninety eight. And if you need those numbers, you can see either myself or Sister Nikisha, sir. I wish for you a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath again, church. Has God been good to you? He certainly has been, because none of us are hospitalized or crippled or can't hear, can't walk. We are breathing. So God is good. So we should be able to give him great praise through singing, right? Amen. All right. So we're going into our divine hour. And we are going to begin with number 515. The Lord is my light. Then why should I fear? By day and by night, his presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin. This blessed persuasion, the spirit lives in. The, the Lord, Lord is my light. Then why should I fear? By day and by night, his presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin. 
This blessed persuasion the Spirit brings in. The Lord is my life, my joy and my song. By day and by night He leads me along. The Lord is my sight, my joy and my song. By day and by night He leads me along. The Lord is my light, though clouds may arise. They stronger the sight looks up to the sky. Where Jesus forever in glory does reign, then how can I ever in darkness remain? The Lord is my life, my joy, and my song. By day and by night He leaves me alone. The Lord is my life, my joy, and my song. By day and by night He leaves me alone. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my strength. I know in His might I'll conquer at length. My weakness in mercy covers with power, and walking by faith He upholds me each on. The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leaves me alone. The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leaves me alone. The Lord is my light, my all and in all. There is in his sight no darkness at all. He is my Redeemer, my Savior and King. With saints and with angels his praises I sing. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night he leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leads me alone. So God be the glory, great things He has done, number four, three, three, four, one. To God be the glory, great things He has done, and He has done great things. We can sing about it. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So love be the word that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. To every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon will change. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Great things He has taught us, great things He has done, and greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be a wonder or trans. 
forth when Jesus leaves thee. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him that glory. Great things he has done. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that is the presence of the Good morning, church. Our call to worship comes to us from number 861 from the back of our hymnal. Please stand. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. The, the church is now called to worship. Now, Heavenly Father, your people gathered together once again to worship you as our Lord and Savior. We ask that you will forgive us of our sins and make us worthy to be in your presence, we pray in Jesus' name. The opening in the two personal days is very good. Praise him, praise him, Jesus. 
Christ the Son, blessed Redeemer, sing our earth is wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest our angels in glory, strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guide His children. In His arms, He'll carry them all day long. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, for our sins He suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus, the crucified. Count His praises, Jesus, who bore our sorrows, love and bound and wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with no sign of spring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophets and priests and kings. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Small and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. God is good, and all the time, no, 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 He is excellent, more than good. Uh, I, I feel good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, I feel good. You know, there's something about the seventh day Sabbath, you see, after, you know, Toil and the labor of the rough and, and rugged week. We are a blessed and a peculiar a set of people. Because when the world continues their hard toil and labor into Sabbath, we have this hope that burn within us, heralding the coming of the Lord. And so we just rest on this blessed day that he has given us. In what? Commemoration of his greatness and goodness, and also a reminder that he is coming again. God is good. And so we lift him up and we give him praise. And we, 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 you know, we just want to share this joy that we have as Seventh-day Adventists. Now it says, greetings traditionally varies across the world, cultures, and across time. In the New Testament, Bible times, the phrase, greet one another with a holy kiss is mentioned about five times or approximately five times. Even Jesus complained to Simon and said, I came into your house and you did not give me a kiss. This act was called the kiss of peace. <laughs> Here are seven other unusual ways people greet themselves across the world. Now, in Tibet, to say hello to you, the people of Tibet stick their tongue out. All right, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> In New Zealand, they greet visitors, not each other, but visitors, with a gesture called 
hungry. They do it by closing their eyes and gently touching foreheads and nose together. Okay. In Spain, when you greet, you kiss on the cheek. Twice. On one cheek and on the other cheek. I'm sure you see those in movies. In Thailand, the tradition. Somebody mentioned COVID. The tradition of the Thai greeting is called Wai. You press your palms together as if you were praying and slightly bow your head. I'm sure you've seen that as well. In Japan, you simply bow gently, sorry, generally, the deeper the bow, the more respectful or respected the other person is. In Yemen and Oman, people bring their noses together for a few friendly taps, you know? And on the islands of Havalu, pressing cheeks together and taking a deep breath in, it's part of a traditional Polynesian welcome for visitors. Now, today we are in Jamaica. And I don't know how you want to do it, but whether you choose to use a handshake or a elbow or a fist bump or a smile or a cultural greeting, I want you to take about 15 seconds to make the person beside you feel indeed welcome and happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I see the smiles. I see the, I see the smiles. And it's not a regular smile, it's the wide one, all right? We look like zip, right? And I'm happy. And I'm, I know each and every one is feels welcome. If you're a visitor joining us for the first time, I want you to raise your hand. Or you can stand if there are visitors, nothing anyone, going once, going twice. So we're Ooh, I see two persons at the back. I just want you to stand and the person closest to that person who raised their hand, just make them feel extra special. Double the fun. You know, you did it already, do it again. Something extra special to let that person feel welcome. I want to change their membership to my All right? And I want to welcome you all to the blessing that God has in store for you today. And if you don't feel welcome, see me after church and I will ensure that you feel extra special today. Thank you for coming out and I wish that your day will be bright with the blessing of God. The deacons come forward. I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name, O oh Lord, for it is good. Let us pray. Eternal loving Father, I want to thank you for this another day that you have spared each and every one of us life that we could come out today to give thanks and praise to you. Thank you for taking us through this another week. And you have blessed us in several ways, in health, with strength, and with monetary. So as you have blessed us, we are here to return some of your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.
I want you to stand. say it again. Happy Sabbath, church. Good morning. Our, our scripture reading will be coming from Luke 19, verses 5 through 9. Luke 19, verses 5 through 9. And it says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. This is the reading of God's holy word. As far as past possible, let us all kneel before the Lord, our maker. O oh God, our loving heavenly Father, we assemble in this, your court today, to lift you up in praise and thanksgiving for your love towards us, for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you, God, for taking us safely through another week. You have been our guide. You have been our defender, our protector, our provider, and you have kept us safe and in spite of the challenges and the crucibles, you have been with us. And we thank you and we praise you. And so as we come today, Lord, we ask that the divine Holy Spirit will fill each heart. We have come with our various challenges, with our various requests, with our various situations. But, oh, Father, you know them all because you read the intent of our hearts, you know the desire of each heart. And so we pray today that you will condescend to be with each of us and to speak peace and courage to our hearts. I ask your Heavenly Father that you will be with those who are visiting with us today. In a special way, we ask you to grant them your very special blessing and help them know that the service today will be a special blessing to their hearts. 
I ask you, Father, to be with those who are online. We know that it is not possible for some to be here with us. But wherever they are, we pray, God, that your holy presence will be there with them, that you will grant comfort to the aching heart, you grant peace to those who are troubled. And, oh, Father, in a very special way, we also want to present to you the bereaved families of our church. Yes, Lord, many are grieving, but we know that you are the great comforter. We pray that you will grant them the comfort that only you know how to give. And help them to understand that better days are coming. I pray, oh God, that you will be with our shortings in a special way, that you will visit them and help them as they lay on their back, that they will continue to look up to you, knowing that soon and very soon you will be coming to take us all home. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless the youth of our church. We recognize the challenges that the youth are facing. I pray, O oh God, that your hand of mercy will reach down and just encircle them, dear Father, and help them to understand that you love them with an everlasting love and it is your desire for them to be saved in your kingdom. I pray, God, that you will be with us as we worship today in a very special way, that you will anoint Oh, your man servant, Pastor A. George McCollum, one more time. And may you speak through him. May you speak to him and help, Lord, that the message will be a means of drawing all of us into a closer relationship with you. Thank you, God, for who you are to us, the loving, caring, heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. With us now, as we enter into the spoken word, may your name be glorified and may your hearts be blessed. We thank you so much for hearing our prayers. We thank you for answering with the forgiveness of all our sins. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare our hearts now for the spoken word, God has indeed provided a message. And here we have a messenger here today. One who I can tell you is a counselor, he's a teacher, and he is also a preacher, among many other things. And one who is very humble, I can tell you. And I know one who will be exalted because the Bible tells us that if we humble ourselves, we will be exalted. So the one who we have today to bring the words of hope and comfort to us is wife is here with us. She is Sister McCollum. For those who are in the congregation who don't know Sister McCollum, please just turn around and give the Virgin a wave. Visitors. Yeah, there we have Sister McCollum. He has two grown children and he is always availing himself. And I can tell you since he has come to this district, he doesn't need much of an introduction again because he's everywhere up and about meeting everybody and trying to make himself at home. And he's indeed at home with us here in the district. And we give thanks for the man of God who is here leading the flock here in the North Patrick district at this time. 
and I speak of no other than our church pastor, and he is Dr. A. George McCollum. I ask that we now breathe a word of prayer in our hearts, that as he availed himself, that the Holy Spirit will use him and that hearts will be drawn closer to Jesus because it is indeed all of us desire to be closer drawn to Jesus. So let us just breathe a word of prayer in our hearts for Dr. McCollum as he prepares himself to come and to speak to the people of God. But before he comes, Sister Anne-Marie will give us a song in meditation. God has been so good to us, we can't complain. I, I'm, I'm not tired of saying that. Because when we are broken, he picks us up and he makes us over and over again. And had it not been for his grace, none of us would be here today. So I hope that the word of this song will bless your heart. Empty and broken, I came back to you, a vessel unworthy and so scarred with sin, but you did not despair, you started over again, and I Day. You didn't throw the clay away. Cause over and over, he mows me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay of And all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. When he is the potter and I am the clay, molded in the cement, he wants me to stay. When I stumbled and I fall and my vessel breaks, he'll just pick up the pieces, he'll never throw the clay away. Cause over and over he more. Thank you very much, Sister Forbes. It's a very fitting 
song for all of us today if we were to be honest. And I have reasons to believe that there are some broken persons here today, but be assured that the potter loves you. Amen. And he's putting back those pieces together because he delights in seeing us whole. I want to thank the Lord and thank you, Sister Corbs, and thank you all for being here today. Two quick things before I share. One, um, we mentioned it before, because of the conference-wide conference evangelistic effort, we, your communion should be in September, but it's going to be in August, August 27th. August 27th, we want you to, it will be announced again. We're giving you early information or announcement because we shifted the day that from which you had in mind. Okay, and we want everything to be cleared for the conference who said, even as you Okay, we we are going to the second breathing exercise. All right. Uh, just to re be reminded of the first, um, it was in and out, right? Okay, and you can do that as fast as you want. I... All right, that was the first, just a reminder. The second one is to inhale and to keep it there. Hold your breath as long as you possibly can. So let's go that. Some of us are long divers. All right, bear those two in mind. The inhale and exhale as we did earlier. And this one, the inhale. And I want you to be also in mind that it is inhale and exhale that is equal to breathing, isn't that so? Right? Right. I'm giving you a hint of where I'm going. Inhale and exhale is equal to breathing. Okay, hold that. So here we are. I'm going to share with you thoughts. And um, Sister Forbes, is like, I'm impressed with the song because it's very much up the street of where we want to go today for the next until time. And I, I have a, a short topic that I am giving this thought, come down, come down, it's tea time, come down, it's tea time, merciful father, help us, as the working of your Holy Spirit, find his way to our hearts and our minds that we will humble ourselves to the foot of the cross so that you can attend to our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know very well that the passage of scripture that was done earlier had to do with Zacchaeus. And I think I want to bring home the point that there are many of us, some are not here today, who do not consider ourselves 
a part of the household of faith, maybe because where we have been in our lives. Zacchaeus was one of those. But it is also true that wherever you are, whatever you have been through, if you are willing to humble yourself, prostrate at the foot of the cross, my God, Jesus is able to reach you. The problem that he has and is having with some of us, we're not willing to humble ourselves. Maybe to repent, to forsake, and say, here am I. But today we want to do that. Because it is only when that is done that he can use us. And we want to be used by God. You'll be surprised to know what so many of us, those listening to me online and those who are here, can do. If only we humble ourselves in the hands of God. I want to use Zacchaeus today as a very good example of one who humbles himself. The Bible says in, in 1 to 6, 19, it gives us a nice description. He was a publican, meaning he was a tax collector. He was also a Jew. In as much as at that point in time, if you ask any Jew, if Zacchaeus was a Jew, they will tell you no. By his profession, made him quite the opposite to the pious Pharisee. Worthy of note is that on this journey to the Passover in Jerusalem, the Pharisees were planning to kill Jesus. While Zacchaeus, the publican, was about to be the center of his attention, of Jesus' attention. Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was passing. And the Bible said that when Jesus reached on the, the sycamore tree and the spirit of prophecy said, the Holy Spirit was communicating with Jesus. Just like when the woman with the issue of blood wanted to touch Jesus. The spirit of prophecy says there was a communication between heaven and earth. And she went on to say, when you look at the commentary on that passage, that the Holy Spirit talked to Jesus and said, slow down. Somebody wants to touch you. In the same experience with Zacchaeus, there was a communication between the Holy Spirit and Jesus saying somebody, extraordinary one, wants to see you, just to look at you. The intention of Zacchaeus was just to see who this person was, this great miracle worker, the talk of the town. The Bible said he was short, so he, he found a suitable position where he could look down on Jesus. But when Jesus reached under the tree, the Holy Spirit said, stop. And when Jesus stopped, the crowd stopped. Now you can imagine How's what Zacchaeus was looking like? His face, he started to tremble. That crowd, including the scribes and Pharisees, was the last crowd that Zacchaeus wants to see him. But as if that wasn't bad enough, Jesus looked up. Wherever Jesus' eyes go, the crowd looked too. So the crowd was not looking on Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, I don't know, maybe those limbs started to shake. And Jesus with his nice 
smooth, tender voice. There's something about Jesus. Especially two things. When we are in sin. Number one. And two, when we are in sin and wanting to see him. Jesus has a special interest in us when we are in sin. And more so when we want to see him. Jesus said, Zacchaeus. Come down. Oh God. Jesus is calling somebody this morning to come down. But what was important is he didn't just say come down. He said make haste. Come down. As if that was not enough. He said I'm going to your house for tea. Now to have tea with your friend is a high setting in those days. In fact, it proves that we are close, we are good. It's a, it's a, it's a social occasion, which is not just for everyone and anybody. Come down, I'm going to your house. It is interesting to note that Jesus called this Jewish extortionist by name. He knows us by name. Hello? Especially when the name is on the church record. You see, Zacchaeus was a Jew. And Jesus was a Jew. There's something common about them. And I want to tell you something today, brothers and sisters, those who are listening to me online, whatever platform you are. As a Christian, when you are called by the name of Jesus, wherever you go, whatever happened to you, he still holds you. I know you as Christian McCallum. I know you as Christian Ford. I know you as Christian Lenny. Hello, somebody. But Zacchaeus had a problem like many of us. Jesus is saying, you're broken, Zacchaeus. But I'm about to fix it for you. Make haste. Jesus did not ask Zacchaeus to hurry because he wanted to have a quick talk with him and then to rush to the Passover feast in Jerusalem. No. Jesus is about to spend a significant portion of his day with a notorious publican disregarding the urgency to attend the traditional, highly esteemed Jewish ceremony. The Passover. The first Jewish festival of the Jewish calendar. Very important. As for Jesus, brothers and sisters, when a sinner is reaching out for salvation, everything else takes second place. The sycamore tree is seldom found in narrow streets of ancient cities. Rather, are mainly on the highway. The one mentioned in this passage was on the main road close to the city gate in Jerusalem. Now, the Greek word sycamorea or the sycamore fig tree is also called the white or sycamore fig tree. It is believed to have derived its name from the Greek sucker fig and Maria mulberry tree. With the leaves resembling those of the mulberry tree and the fruit that of the fig tree. And I'm saying this to make the point that there are reasons to believe, uh, commenters, commentators believe that it is a fig tree like this. It reminds me and others of the parable of the barren fig tree. Asking the Jewish nation to repent or else I will cut you down. But in this sycamore tree, when Jesus looked up, without much efforts of searching for fruit, there was Zacchaeus ready. For harvest. Come down. 
Come down, it's time for tea. Come down, Zacchaeus, you're ripe and ready to be picked. In the eyes of those looking on, Jesus was about to fellowship with this thieving publican. But in the eyes of Jesus, he was about to have grape juice. He was about to have communion with a repentant sinner. Yes, the Bible commentary tells us in page 852 to 853, Zacchaeus, the chief among the publicans. Zacchaeus was a Jew and detested by his countrymen. His rank and wealth were the reward of a calling they abhorred, and which was regarded as another name injustice and extortion. When the crowd saw Jesus walking close to Zacchaeus, and now Zacchaeus had taken up a different position. Hello, somebody. Came down from all the sycamore tree, a little trembling, you know. But when he, he, he catches composure, I, 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 and then Zacchaeus, I'm not taking you to your office to look on the books. I'm not reminding you of extortionism. I'm going to your house for tea. Zacchaeus becomes comfortable in the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If you want a member of the church who make mistakes to be comfortable in your presence, don't remind them of the past. Give them hope in Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus, it's tea time. Come down. So he was not walking with Jesus. Hello. In fact, he was closer to Jesus than most, if not all, the disciples. He was now close up to Jesus. When the crowd saw him walking close to Zacchaeus in the very circle of the disciples, from the sycamore tree to the circle of the disciples, Envy spread throughout the crowd. Scribes and Pharisees were wondering, that is Zacchaeus. Thief is Zacchaeus. Criminal is Zacchaeus. I just paid twice my taxes to Zacchaeus. Bible said they all murmured in verse 7 saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is of a sin. Most, if not everyone in that crowd, you are victims of Zacchaeus extortion. So you can understand from a human standpoint the reason for the murmur. Come on. It's real. Zacchaeus understood that too. Zacchaeus understood that also, and that reality stopped him. The spirit of prophecy said that reality stopped him in his tracks. Ellen White says. Verse um, 8 to 9, in commenting on this passage, apparently, quote, Zacchaeus was walking with Jesus. But upon hearing the angry protests of the crowd, he turned to face his destructors and addressed himself to Jesus. Watch what is happening here. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord. Now he's facing the destructors, but he's talking to the Lord. Hello, somebody. You don't have to confess to your distractors. Face your God. He said to the Lord, behold, the, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Remember I told that Zacchaeus was the Jew, right? Zacchaeus was living now in Leviticus 6 verse 5. And Numbers 5, verse 7, which said that you ought to restore. Once you are caught, restore fivefold. Give it back. And then fivefold of that which you have extorted. That's what Zacchaeus was doing. But he was confessing to his God. In actuality, what this meant 
is that those within, and this is real, those within the city of Jericho was about to get a check. Not from the inland revenue or Rome, but from Brother Zacchaeus. Personal account. I'm giving it back, Lord. And this is real. As if that was not enough, taxes will be cut next year by almost 50%. Because Zacchaeus is now an honest tax collector if he continues. By the way, Rome would not lose one cent of what was due to Caesar. E.G. went on to say that Zacchaeus' restoration was the best of evidence that he had experienced a change of heart. Hello, somebody. Where there is a change of heart, you are going to have evidence. When you are properly informed and restored, you are going to behave differently. When the Holy Spirit has done something for you, it cannot be the same old you. I believe that it was from this indication of sincerity that Jesus said to Zacchaeus, this day is salvation come to your house. For as much as he has also a son of Abraham. I'm coming closer to the end, but I must let you get this. Zacchaeus had long been evicted, long been evicted from the house of Abraham by the Jewish laws and nation. Leaders and the nation of, 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 at large have, have, have evicted Lazarus because a publican who extorted their own people, his name was struck off the book as a son of Abraham. He was no more by virtue of him being a publican. And even though he was a Jew, according to a certain Jewish tradition, Zacchaeus was no more entitled to the rewards afforded to the seeds of Abraham. Now he was about to receive a mansion with his heavenly father. And if he is faithful, he will judge some of those who evicted him from the house of Abraham. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ restored Zacchaeus to the house of Abraham. You see, the house of Abraham belongs to God. Not our house. Hello, somebody. And sometimes, you know, when you think others write you off, Jesus just rewrite your name. Hello, somebody. How can I say it again? Anytime or sometimes when you think people, they right you up. Jesus just make it bold. And wants you to know that he's having tea with you. Ladies and gentlemen, sinners who truly repent and remain faithful will be able to feast with Jesus at the welcome table. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with you and you with me like he did with Zacchaeus. The question is, is there anything preventing you today from feasting with the Lord? Your house is my house and my house is your house. So come and stop. There are reasons to believe. Zacchaeus climbed the following Claim the following words as one of Jesus' disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, they may be also. Amen. Stand with me. Shall we stand? We're about to go into the third breathing exercise. I'm coming closer to you.
Where are you, Troy? Are you still in the office or someplace defrauding someone? Doing everything that should not be? Still somewhere, still somewhere up there holding on to unforgiven sin, grudges and bitterness against a brother, sister, or a neighbor? I don't know. But the question is, Jesus is calling you to come down. Come down. I want to feast with you. Are we up there, away from the Lord, while Satan is busy taking down our family members, neighbors, and friends into Christless graves? Before Zacchaeus reached home, he reconciled with his neighbors, with Jesus as his witness. Today, this moment is reconciliation. Because unless we reconcile, it's time to repent and reconcile. Because unless that is done, they can't be in a fellowship one with the other. And certainly not with the Lord. I'm going to read this quotation with you. To you. Then I'm going to get into the breathing exercise. And then I'm going to call. In fact... Even as I speak, for those who be standing in the audience today and you want to say, Lord, I want you to feast with me. You may not yet have given your heart to the Lord. You may not have, you might have, but not yet, not yet decide to be baptized. I'm going to ask you, just as our Elder Lamb is walking, he's not coming, but stand and walk up to the altar so that by the time I'm finished with this thought, I can pray for you. If you are in the audience today, not yet giving your heart to the Lord, not yet demonstrate that, I'm going to ask you to come. Just come. And I want to pray with you. This is the Robinson, Jocelyn Robinson here. She here? Come. Come, come Sister Robinson. Come. Any other in this audience? We have been talking all week for a while, so I can call her. That's okay. And she was happy to raise her hand. Is there anybody else? You have not yet given your heart to the Lord. God bless you. Just pull the mask a little. Let me get to you. And then you can put it back. Beautiful. Wonderful lady. Anybody else? You have not yet. You have not yet gone through the water of a grave of baptism. But you accept Christ. And you don't know when that will be. I'm just going to ask you to come. And while I'm reading this, please move. God bless you. As for our members, are you still some? Up there in your sycamore tree. You see, he's wanting to want to see Jesus. But it's a different thing to be with Jesus. And I don't want you to miss that. There are so many who are seeing him from afar. But still holding on to the limb of those sycamore trees. Jesus is saying to somebody, let go and come down. I want to fellowship with you. I want to go home and to live with you and to be with you. I'm knocking at your heart. Quote says, even now he is at work, speaking of adversary, in accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms. Are you watching the news? Are you listening to international news and our own local news here? These are happening, and in some cases, to our own relatives and friends. We're hearing of them dying. We're seeing them in the hospital. The prophecies are fulfilling in our very eyes. Are you witnessing to your friends before these things happen to them? She said in tempest floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes in every place and a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follows. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and 
thousands perish by the pestilence. Brothers and sisters, it's not time to play. COVID-19 is still here. And monkeypox. And there are going to be more. But thanks be to God for the people of God who are immunized by the blood of Jesus Christ. If there is one vaccination you must take, it has to be the blood of Jesus. More pestilence are coming. More wars and rumors of war. And he's asking us to tell somebody about his love. So we are ready for the third breathing exercise. So let's run by them. Number one, in and out. Number one, number two. We're going to breathe, inhale, and hold it as long as you possibly can. Let's go. I don't want any of you to drop down inside there. Do you know that if you were to keep that too long, what would happen to you? You would die. Follow me. Breathing is inhaling and exhaling. Isn't that so? So let's go to number three. Inhale and try to talk at the same time. Inhale and try to talk while you are inhaling. Not getting there? I want you to bear in mind that breathing is inhaling and exhaling. If you are inhaling and you're not exhaling, you're going to die. So the next part of exercise three is to exhale and try to talk. You're breathing. So inhale and exhale and try to talk now. Just talk. Inhaling and exhaling. Try to talk. Let me hear a sound. Say anything. Hello? Hello? Brothers and sisters, just as how breathing sustains your life, inhaling and exhaling, if you are only always taking in and not giving out, you are going to die spiritually. Spiritual death. Some may take longer to die. But our spiritual growth, depending on our constant breathing, taking in and sharing the love of Christ with someone. If we are not doing it, if we are not breathing spiritually, we will. Could it be that there's a lot of dead bodies in the church? Could it be that instead of praises and worship going up to heaven at sweet instincts, there are stench of dead spiritual bodies in the church? Because we may be Inhaling but not exhaling, and certainly not inhaling and exhaling. Today we want to make a commitment to our God that by His grace, even if at some point in time I was on the verge, we want to say, Lord, rescue me now. You did it for Sakyas, and you can do it for me. 
I want you to raise your hand as a member of this church. You want a purpose in your heart that by your grace, oh God, I will live for you. I will breathe for you in and out. And I will let others know of your goodness and mercy. I don't want to die spiritually. Your hands are raised. I want you to be praying in your own heart. Even as we prepare to register others for this coming event. I want you to be registered for the kingdom of God. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Glorious Father who art in heaven. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. We want to thank you for life. We want to thank you for life eternal. We want to thank you, Lord, that we can get every day and breathe the breath of God. What a privilege that we are still walking and still talking and still having the opportunity to praise you. But there are some of our relatives and our friends, our neighbors. There are many people we know walking and doing everything on Christ-like. We ask that you will place a soul, even one, oh God. Even one, one at a time the heart of somebody today. And that we will recognize that Satan is wiping out the pestilence and different types of calamity as we approach the end of time. But we pray that you will qualify us. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to repent of our own sins. Reconcile with you and with each other. Because like on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples recognized what was happening, they said it's time to unite. And when they did that, the Bible said thousands were saying, We want to experience another Pentecost. As we approach the end of this year, let it be, oh God, that we will not only be informed and be reformed, but we will bring someone to the foot of the cross as a result of such. Thanks for being with us. For hearing and answering our prayers. And for reestablishing our relationship with you. We pray in Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you for Sister Robinson. She had purpose in her heart. That she too wants to be baptized. And baptism is being planned. And she, among others here today, will experience the watery grave of baptism in that due time. We thank you, Lord, for taking her down of the sycamore tree. She's not just seeing whom you are, but she's knowing whom you are. And we pray that when you come, like Zacchaeus, like the many other us, of us who will be there, she too, will be there to feast with you around the table. Thanks for hearing and answering the prayers of your saints. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Sister Robinson, you may be seated. We will speak. Yes. Please be prepared for the closing exercise. word has gone forth and it is said those who have ears to hear let them hear and like Jesus the mission that he was on the rescuing mission he rescued Zacchaeus so we will follow suit and the purpose in our hearts with the singing of a song number 367 rescue the perishing here for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and from the grave. We poor erring one, lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. And we stand at the appropriate time.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father and our God, we pause again to tell you thanks for your mercies. Thanks for the rescue plan that you have put in place for fallen human beings. Thank you for your words which came forth with such power and clarity today. May we all hear whether we were in the physical or online, who would have heard your words being spoken today. May we not remain the same. And if we were hiding or if we were guilty of running away from you, help us to surrender all even now. And help us, Father, that we will not look to the left or look to the right but we will look full and straight in Jesus' face. Help us as we go that we will not keep a message like this to ourselves, but we will tell it to others and we will invite them to come and see, come and meet a man who has for them a plan. So into your hands, we want to commit each and every one. And as we leave here to our different places for lunch today, may we go and perp go and while we are going may we purpose in our hearts that we will comes what may we will seek to serve you and to serve you until the end we pray now that you will take us where we are going safely and bring us back for the remaining portion of the sabbath day service so into your way i commit into your hands i commit all our ways and all our deeds Commit even our very thoughts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This makes us Lord, with blessings we pray. As from thy worship we go Just a few reminders before we go. Remember the afternoon's program, it's kind of a pack one, so we want to go have lunch and prepare Bible class, 3.30. AY is after, and the AY will take us into the closing off of the Roaring Lamb series. The speaker who should have been here today, but God knows everything best. He was not here, so hence we heard such a word from our pastor. But he will be here, God's willing, 
to close off this evening for Vesper. So try and be here so we can have a grand close to the Roaring Lamb series. And after the closing of the series, Sister Peter is asking that all the choir members please meet for a short practice this evening. And she said at six, around about six, 6.30. So if you are here, um, don't leave. And if you, for some reason, you're not here for the closing, come for that choir practice. We're practicing for the funeral service, which is next week, it was, was announced, for Sister Marcia Gardner, faithful member here, and one who we want to support the family. Javon, Kumar, and Selena, we want to support them as best as possible. So we want to have a strong choir showing also with a song that can help to soothe their heart. So let's bear those in mind as we prepare, we go have lunch and come back. Thanks much for listening and enjoy lunch. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight Goes a melody sweeter than sound In celestial life strength it unceasingly falls Oh my soul I can in finite come Peace, peace, wonderful peace Coming down from the Father above Weep over my spirit forever I pray In fathomless pillows of love What a treasure I have in this wonderful peace Buried deep in my innermost soul so secure that no power can mind it away While the years of eternity roll Peace, peace, wonderful peace Coming down from the Father above Sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fatherless pillars of love Where we sleep and I rise to the city of peace Where the altar of peace I shall sing That chain of my song with a ransom will sing In the heavenly kingdom will be Coming down from the Father above Sweep over my spirit forever I pray In fatherless pillows of love Weary souls without gladness or comfort or rest Passing down to the rock day of time May the Savior, your friend, hear the shadows go dark. Oh, accept all this peace so sublime. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fact.